Starline, one of my favorite animated movies of all time. There is so much to love about this film. It has interesting characters, a creepy but engaging story, a mysterious, dreamlike world for the setting, and all of it is conveyed through the medium of stop-motion animation. All in all, from A to Z, top-tier stuff. And it really should be no surprise that this film has quite the cult following and is a favorite among people who enjoy horror movies. You might be thinking, horror? Oh, absolutely. Coraline is full of creepy, unsettling scenes that still get a rise out of me to this very day. No joke, Other Mother is straight up nightmare fuel. But you wanna know what else is nightmare fuel? Something that is far more horrifying and will keep you up at night? Oh, ho, 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 you're not ready. Other Mother f***ing Caroline. And the Magic Potion, trademarked. Oh, what's that? You did not know there was a ripoff of Coraline? Well, you're gonna wish you didn't know. Cause this movie is one of the worst, most confusing things I've ever seen. I, I, I just can't wrap my head around this movie. Why? Why does this movie exist? I can understand the logic of copying big blockbuster films like The Lion King or Cars or Frozen. But why Coraline? I mean, yeah, it was financially successful, but I wouldn't necessarily call it an overwhelming success. So why rip it off? <laughs> I guess we'll find out soon enough. But before we do, let's pour one out for the kids who unfortunately got stuck with this movie because mom couldn't tell the difference. Mom, 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 can we get Coraline? No, honey, we have Coraline at home. Coraline at home. Ah, <laughs> uh, God damn it, Mom. All right, so who are the criminals behind this movie? Honestly, the information about Caroline is spotty at best and leaves me asking more questions than what I started with. According to my sources, Caroline was directed by Virginia Curia. She's from Spain and primarily works with stop motion animation, which is kind of ironic. Like Caroline wasn't stop motion, but tried to emulate the visual style of Coraline? <laughs> uh, we'll get to that mess here in a bit. But after looking at Virginia's work, I wouldn't say that she's bad. She's competent. And it looks like she does most of her work with animated commercials from Spain. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I do find it strange that she literally directed a movie, but doesn't include it on her Vimeo. Uh, something tells me she wasn't too proud of it. And I don't blame her. I, I wouldn't want this on my resume either. And who is the writer behind this movie? I'm gonna butcher her name, but it's Anzala Lolito, or something like that. God, where to start with her? So I found sources about her, but they're all in Spanish, cause she's from Spain. And the English translations of said sources uh, weren't too helpful. Thanks, Google. From what I could gather from her bomb-ass website, Anzela is a children's book writer. Actually, I was kind of wondering if Caroline was based on a book, since the credits of the movie features 2D images that somewhat mirror a children's book style. Unfortunately, though, I couldn't find anything to verify that. All I could discover was that the movie was originally called Brufariras. Brufariras? <laughs> I suck at saying words. Uh, Brufariras, which I believe is Portuguese for witchcraft. Guys, really, I'm trying my best to understand, but I'm the big old dumb American, and I only know two languages, freedom and love. But for real, I'm really stupid. Real talk though, if any of you in the comments know Spanish or Portuguese or know any kind of clarity about this topic, please hit me up and let me know on Twitter. <laughs> Cause I am losing sleep over this one. But here's where I'm really confused. Why copy Coraline? Was that always the studio's intention? Or was it coincidence? Or was it a last minute decision because everyone who worked on Caroline realized how bad it was? Oh God, oh God, this, this movie's awful. What do we do? Why did we hire this woman to write the script? We can't even read Spanish. Chuck, don't worry, I have an idea. Remember that somewhat successful now cult classic stop motion film from six years ago? Yeah, that one. Yeah, 
We'll copy that. I mean, our main character kind of looks like the Coraline girl, right? Oh, we're so fired. So was it on purpose? Or was it by random chance? Or was this just marketing losing their minds so they could sell to an international audience? Guys, I don't know. And I don't think anyone will ever truly know. And that might be for the best. Cause this movie <laughs> ain't worth it. All right, so what's the movie about? Oh, an easy question to ask, but so incredibly hard to answer. By the way, I watched both Coraline and Caroline the same night, and that was an interesting experience. It was like looking into the eyes of God, and then Satan right afterwards. But hey, you know what? That's not a fair comparison. I mean, come on. Satan's not that bad. Well, I just wanna say that I'm a huge fan. Okay, the story. Here we go. A fair warning, this story is utterly insane. So the movie takes place in the modern world. I'm guessing Spain, because of the Spanish writing for police and whatnot. We're then introduced to our main characters, Caroline, trademarked, and her grandmother. Both of them live in this RV, a la Ben 10 style, and drive around dispensing natural remedies the grandmother concocts for her customers. Is that a verb? Concoct? Oh yeah, baby, I wanna concoct you. <laughs> you got a rash? Boom, you're cured. But Caroline here wants to use this <laughs> magic, I think? Honestly, I don't know. They never really explain it. Her grandma's like, put down that potion and help me get back to work. But Caroline here is dead set on getting into this flyers club. Like she's chatting on her phone with some older dude named Salu. And he's like, you gotta send me proof that you can fly if you wanna be in my club. Oh, what's that? Your grandmother took your phone? Don't worry, I tracked you down and I'm following your RV as we speak. What the hell? I honestly don't know what to make of this guy. It comes across as super creepy, right? Coraline, Caroline, here we go. Caroline is obviously a kid. And Salou here is obviously not. But Caroline is like daydreaming about him, holding his hand, and he's following her around. So what the f is going on here? No joke, I was not expecting this movie to actually be creepier than Coraline. God save me. So Granny and Caroline are being pursued by this company who wants to buy Granny's food truck and also her natural remedies. Two lung busters. <laughs> but she doesn't want to sell. The corporation then sends out its lackeys to track her down. And after some really bizarre freak accident, the company kidnaps the grandma and leaves Caroline with Salou. Don't worry, folks, there's a police officer here. A, a cop whose face just glitches out of reality. Ah, my bad. I forgot to mention the endearing side characters. You got Cat, Weasel, and then there are these three singing snails who remind me of the mice from Babe. Guys, no joke, even the movie says the snails are annoying. These are really weird. I know, they're really annoying. They follow me wherever I go and I just can't get rid of them. It's like the only thing from this film that I can agree on. By the way, I'm like at the 20 minute mark of the story at this point, and it's already getting very stupid. For example, by this time in Coraline, there's a real mystery being built, but it has a nice slow burn. So we, as an audience, can take in the mood and the surroundings. For Caroline, it's, oh no, grandma got kidnapped by these mind controlled lackeys, and they took her back to their base so she can tell them where the secret formula is but then they come back to the truck because that's where the secret formula is and we got to keep it away from them or something. I don't know, I'm driving. And then we're introduced to the main villain. And guys, truly, I, I'm at a loss for words. I, I literally don't know what to say. Her voice acting is god awful. It sounds like a nightmarish version of Dexter from Dexter's Lab. Especially because I stole it. <laughs> So Caroline and Salou take off and then join up with a surfer version of Brock from Pokemon. Oh, by the way, 
They literally say Pokemon in this movie. Evolve? Like a Pokemon? These donuts are great. Jelly filled are my favorite. Nothing beats a jelly filled donut. Shut your mouth! Our heroes are able to FaceTime Grandma, somehow, as she uses sign language to tell Caroline to make some kind of potion and where to find her. The villains then strap Grandma to a table and start spinning her around in circles so they could inject truth serum into her? Uh, okay. Um, man, but here's the thing. They, they want to control her mind? They already established in the movie that they have mind control technology. What the hell? Did the writer forget? Was she like, we, we have to mind control what she does. So, uh, how can we mind control her? as she looks at the mind-controlled lackeys. What a massive plot hole. It blows my mind. And then, after that, the villain's mom arrives? And for some odd reason, she's obsessed with poker. And like, is the main villain a kid or an adult? Because I don't know. They don't establish it. She's small, she's short, and her mother's here and her mom's tall. But like, then there's the boob and butt like foam that made her stuff shrink. I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. I am so beyond confused at this point. The movie just keeps introducing more random plot points, but refuses to explain any of it. So Caroline goes to this magical forest, finds a secret ingredient plant for this formula. SpongeBobby boy, don't give the formula to the Caroline girl. And then Salu gets arrested by the police. <laughs> Good. We got him. And then we get this scene, which even with context is still incredibly confusing. Okay, so rapid fire scenes here. Let's go. So Caroline gets her ingredients. We then get a Shawshank Redemption parody. And then out of nowhere, we get a song with conflicting lyrics to the plot of the movie. Oh, Caroline, you don't need a glider to fly. And then literally three minutes later, she's flying on a glider. Come on, movie, pick a lane. And here we are, the epic climax of the movie. Oh God, I'm not ready. <clears throat> so Caroline breaks into the factory. She finds her grandma, but then tragedy strikes. Both of them get captured. Caroline is then forced to create the recipe for the villain. And folks, Brace yourselves. We then get one of the biggest disses of cinematic history. What are they called? They're called none of your business, lady. Oh! After that, we get some shoehorn message about nature versus technology and protecting the environment. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Gotta sell our movies. We gotta have a good message for the kids. Uh, what's it about? Um, uh, environment good, technology bad. It, it, it came out of nowhere. This theme, this message came out of the ether. No rhyme, no reason, just out of nowhere. So dumb. Well, the joke is on the girl villain as she and her assistant were tricked with the recipe and get stuck in some kind of goo while the good guys escape the factory. We get a few more WTF moments some boring action, some really bad jokes, and then an uncomfortable moment between these two. We will, we will, we will. And that's the movie. As Granny, Caroline, Creepy Guy, and Brock from Pokemon fly off into the horizon and sing this stupid song. A stupid song to match the tone of this stupid movie. Really, I'm not having a good time. And I bet you aren't either. Well, that was difficult to get through. Guess I gotta break it down now. Yay. Let's start with the story. This was legitimately one of the most confusing plots I've ever followed. There are so many things that are introduced, but the movie does such a poor job of explaining them. We're just told about the magic and how Caroline and Granny use it, but that's it. They don't establish rules or lore or anything. You're just thrown into it. On top of that, there's random singing snails, paragliders who hang out with kids, mind control, and inflated butts. Or I guess deflated or tightened. I honestly don't know what that scene was about. It still disturbs me. None of the characters are interesting. Like, not even a bit. 
who they are, what they're about, where they start, where they end, I feel nothing for them. Because it gave me nothing to work with. In Coraline, you see how she changes over the course of the movie. She starts off as a bit of a selfish brat, but that's because she's acting out because she feels ignored by her parents. Throughout the story though, she becomes more selfless, and that's a good character arc. But for Caroline, um, uh, she learns how to fly. Ta-da, how cool. And don't even get me started on the dialogue and voice acting. The delivery of these lines were so flat, especially with the main villain. I couldn't tell if she had an accent or if she was just misreading her lines. It was all over the place. On top of that, some of these lines from the script were very unnatural. Things that actual people wouldn't say. It's always the interesting things that get me in trouble, Grandma. Really? Yeah? People say that? Huh? Normal humans say that? And then finally, there's the animation. In my opinion, the story and the characters were far worse than the visuals. But that's not saying much. These designs are so bizarre. It's like someone pinched Caroline's nose together out of clay. Like, squish, squish. I can't believe you've done I'm this. I'm gonna pinch your face and make your nose a little, little line, a little ridge running down your face. There you go, that's your nose. Also, these characters look somewhat like wooden dolls, which isn't inherently bad. I could dig that. But then you see the characters actually move, and that's where the animation loses me. What's with the frame rates and the movement? Like, is it trying to be stylized so it can have a stop motion vibe to it? Because honestly, I thought the movie itself wasn't loading up for me properly at first. I even restarted it, and I was like, no, that's just the movie. That's how it's animated. And folks, it does not look good. If anything, it takes me out of the movie. The set designs are boring, the action is slow and comes across as choppy, and of course, there are animation errors. Shaking hands, floating bodies, and faces that are not loading up properly. This movie, in its entirety, is an absolute mess. And the worst part? This movie has the audacity to call itself Caroline, a name that was a running gag from Coraline. It's like the producers went, oh, we know we're stealing from Coraline, and that the character specifically doesn't like to be called Caroline. But you know what? Screw her. Let's just rub some more salt in that wound, why don't we? Overall, this movie is garbage through and through. There is nothing of value here. The story, the animation, the dialogue, the voice acting, all of it, trash. That's my character. I'm the trash man. I come out, I throw trash all over the, all over the movie. It's even hard to recommend this movie to folks who enjoy bad movies. Stuff that is so bad that it's good. Well, not here. It's just bad. And on top of that, it's shameless too. It deliberately copied the likeness of Coraline and used it as a way to trick buyers. Again, I don't know for 100% if Caroline was made with the intention of ripping off Coraline, but the results are the same nonetheless. Shame on you, Caroline, not cool. So, would I recommend this movie? Hmm, well, if you're with your friends and all of you are angry and drunk and want something to rip into, then sure, go for it. But for everybody else, <laughs> stay far away from it unless you truly want to see the world burn. Cranny is on fire today. <laughs> <laughs>